So I got to play Jedi Survivor, and if I had to describe it in one word, it would be... <laughs> yes. I fought Clone Wars era battle droids. I explored a forest and took out this big ass monster with two lightsabers. And holy shit, that Rancor just tried to eat Cal. Welcome back to the channel guys, this is Star. Today I'm so excited to show you never before seen gameplay footage of Jedi Survivor and to give you my first impressions of the game after getting to play it. This video is only made possible thanks to EA, who flew me and many other creators out to Los Angeles to get our hands on the game early and try it out. So huge shout out and thank you to them and to Respawn Entertainment for the opportunity. Honestly, I couldn't believe that they invited me out, considering how much crap I've given them over the years about Battlefront 2. Let's just say the conversation went a little something like this. I won't let you manipulate me. So sure are you? In all seriousness, it was an unforgettable experience and I'm finally able to talk to all of you guys about it. So let's do it. What you are seeing right now is brand new gameplay of Jedi Survivor. Unfortunately, I was not allowed to capture my own gameplay from my demo time, so you'll probably see a lot of this same footage on some other creators' videos too, but pretty much everything that you're seeing is from the demo that we all got to play. My first impression after playing the game is that it took everything good from Fallen Order and aged it like a fine wine. The game is several steps up from the first one, in basically every single way. The combat is way smoother than JFO, your parries feel responsive, and your attacks are satisfying when they connect. Movement is a lot more free-flowing, and exploration doesn't feel like as much of a chore this time, despite the fact that the world feels way bigger than in Fallen Order. Finding treasures and collectibles is actually worth it, with a huge range of customization options for both Cal and BD-1. It's not just ponchos anymore. And hey, there's even fast travel between save points. Basically, if you liked Fallen Order, you're gonna do backflips over this game. It is everything that JFO wishes it could have been. Jedi Survivor picks up five years after the events of Fallen Order. Cal and BD-1 now have command of the Mantis and are continuing their fight against the Empire. All that time has made Cal a powerful Jedi Knight, and I want to show you guys what he's able to do in this game before we talk about some of the story details, because this way I get to show off more gameplay too. In the first one, Cal had three force powers and two lightsaber stances that he could use in different combinations. This time, Cal has a new force ability and three more stances to add to his arsenal, which makes the combat possibilities so much more in-depth. And while I was playing, I actually noticed how many different combo finishers there were, depending on which attacks I was using. It was at the point where it almost seemed like no two combos were ever the same, which was crazy. If you thought Fallen Order had a deep combat system, this one is at least five times deeper. I really liked how Cal started this new story with all of the abilities and powers that he had to relearn in his first adventure. We start with the push, pull, slow, which has become something of an ultimate ability with a charge. We even start with the double jump, and that was really nice because it keeps that feeling that Cal hasn't lost a step. If anything, he feels way more powerful than ever. He has a new force power in Survivor called Confuse, which is basically a mind trick. When Cal uses this on an enemy, that target will fight by Cal's side temporarily. And my favorite part about this power was the fact that you could actually use it on the wildlife. You can mind trick this tank of an animal and watch it mow down stormtroopers without having to lift a finger yourself. It's amazing. Just be sure to get out of its way when the confusion wears off. There's another power that Cal has in this game that's similar to the confusion, and this ability is to tame the various creatures in the overworld. This is how Cal can mount and ride them like we've seen in the trailers. It's really useful for getting around the map, but it doesn't exactly have a real purpose in combat. It's just for exploration. So as you can see, Cal's gotten a lot more powerful in the force over these last five years. But to be honest, it feels like he's done a lot of training with his lightsabers more than anything else. In Fallen Order, Cal only had the single blade stance and the double bladed staff stance, and he was experimenting with some flashy dual wielding moves at the end. In Survivor, we start with three stances, adding in that dual wielding as a fully usable lightsaber form, and this was one of my favorite things about the combat. There's going to be a total of five different stances in this game. We've got the three that we start with, and then we have to unlock the cross guard and the blaster stances as we progress. And this is what really opens up all those doors and makes the combat system so deep. There's five stances to choose from, but Cal can only have two equipped at once, and you can freely change them at any save point. It's basically like a loadout. 
It was really fun experimenting with the different styles, trying out single and double, or double and dual wielding, or single and dual wielding. Of course, with dual wielding being the newest one, that was the one that I tried most. Unfortunately, I did not get the chance to try out the cross guard or the blaster stances, but all in good time. I have a feeling those stances are going to be unlocked a lot later in the game compared to what we played for the demo. The skill trees are even more in-depth too, with each power and stance having its own skill tree, which only makes the ability pool deeper for Cal. I know that I didn't even scratch the surface of what was possible, and I was only able to unlock a few things in the skill tree. Besides force powers and lightsaber forms, Cal also has a few new tricks up his sleeve, including a mid-air dash to help cover small distances, a grapple hook which is literally up his sleeve, and this is a really cool toy. It's only got a limited range, so you have to be close enough to the surface for it to activate, but it is useful for getting to places that are hard to reach. And even BD-1 gets some upgrades, like turning himself into a nifty pair of bd noculars. There's just so much in this game, and I only got to play a few hours of it, so it left me wanting more. We have new features like a gardening mechanic, where you can plant and grow seeds that you collect on your journey. There's a DJ group in the cantina that lets you play different music tracks. There are rare minerals and ores that you have to collect that let you unlock cool cosmetic upgrades. There's just a lot of extra stuff that wasn't in the first one, and it makes the game feel really big in comparison. The way I see it, Jedi Fallen Order is the Death Star, and Jedi Survivor is Starkiller Base. I'd say that's a decent summary of my first impressions of Jedi Survivor. With all of that said, I'm pretty sure you guys want to know about the plot. <laughs> yes. Alright, bear with me here, because I have to be careful about what I say. So, what I was able to play happens pretty early in the game. At the start, Cal is on a mission with BD-1, and this mission doesn't exactly go as planned. Because of that, they have to make a getaway aboard the Mantis, and in the chaos, the Mantis suffers some pretty heavy damage. That's why Cal has to crash land on the new planet that we've seen in the trailers, Kobo, which was also the location of the demo. I can't give away too much, but what I can tell you is this. Cal and BD are on this planet to actually find Grease, who is working at the local cantina. It's implied that Grease actually gave the Mantis to Cal, which was wild to me considering how much Grease loved that ship. But when Cal gets to Kobo, he needs to find Grease so that he can help him fix up the Mantis. Really, Cal just needs to find a part to fix it and Grease will point him in the right direction. But it's on this journey to find the part where Cal makes a couple of dangerous and unexpected discoveries that progress the plot. One of these discoveries is what I'm only allowed to describe as an anomaly. And this anomaly is something that Cal sees potential value in. I know I'm being super vague with that. Honestly, that's all I can tell you about it. I wish I could say more because there are certain things that I really, really want to talk about. Like this person! I know who this is. And you don't. And that's a major flex. All in good time. I promise all will be revealed in good time. One character that I can talk about, though, is Ravis, the Gendai that we got introduced to in some of the earlier trailers. It is confirmed that he's the exact same species as Dirge, the bounty hunter from the Tartovsky Clone Wars series. Ravis is the leader of a group called the Bedlam Raiders, who are some of the enemies that you have to fight while you're on Kobo. These guys have command of a battalion of Clone Wars era battle droids, including B1s, B2 supers, and BX commandos. They all work for Ravis, and they're trying to help him accomplish his goals. When Cal first meets Ravis, he actually stands in his way to protect a citizen of Kobo, this little green alien whose name is Turgle. The guy roughing him up is a Bedlam Raider elite by the name of Zeke, and as a Jedi, Cal obviously can't just sit there and watch this poor green dude get murked, so he steps in and does some talking with his lightsaber. It's a crucial meeting for a crucial character, and we see Ravis a few times in the demo. I can't wait to talk about the plot more in detail. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have for today's video. There will be nothing but Jedi Survivor content on the channel all week, maybe some Battlefront 2 streams sprinkled in there. So if you like today's coverage, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you guys for coming to check it out. You're the best audience on YouTube. Thank you once again to EA and Respawn for letting me get my hands on Survivor early. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you next time. Peace!